Hi there and welcome to another Power BI video. Today I would like to show you how to create dynamic reporting month and let's have a look. First of all we have a, a quite nice looking report here with some visuals in the in the canvas that are coming from the, the sales fact table itself with some, some numbers that we see based on specific dimensions for which we also see the same dimensions appear here in the slicers pane for let's say region product and customer as well as we have the the date slicer here too that uh, are showing some data from uh, 2024 and 2025 i mean uh, the date and we also see the months regarding uh, these years too so for 2024 we have all the all the months available and for 2025 we have data up until june and the reason being is that we have the sales table that are live connected to data that shows us um, numbers from let's say the previous reporting month and whenever we have a new reporting month then it will also get updated to, to showcase here so for instance when we have july data it will also show up here as july and here currently is uh, 2025 and june selected now what we want to create here is to create a new column if we are on the reporting month of june which is going to be called reporting month and for the other uh, columns it will also it will only called uh, the same so january february and march and when we have some new data coming from the live table for july then the reporting month will be called as july and june will be called again june instead of the reporting month and with that we actually will um, be able to not uh, update the slicer every month whenever we have some some new data so that we will actually uh, omit this this manual process so how to do that first of all let's have a look at our data view so we have three tables here for uh, one one of them is one of them is the measures table and the other one is uh, the, the calendar dimension table and the sales table. Let's have a look at the sales table. We have, as I said, three of the three of the, the dimensions here, customer product region. We then also have the date column for which we see only monthly data. So you see we don't have on the daily breakdown because this is a monthly table and we have the data latest from 0106-2025. So next month there will be data from July 2025 and so on and we also have quantity unit price total sales the, the numbers typical numbers from a, a sales fact table then we have a look at the the DT calendar table here we have again the date column but this time it should always show um, every single day here so starting from 2025 up until 2020 uh, 4 to 2025 sorry then we have the year month month name sh uh, month uh, short name and so on with some different breakdowns as well now as i said what we want to do is we want to create the reporting month name for the the month itself and for the rest it will be called the same and, and in order to do that we need to first save what is the the current reporting month from the fact table and uh, the, the best practice in this case is actually to save it in a in a table itself and how we can do that is we go to home here and maybe click on the, the new table so we will do that by by the dex function and we will call this one dt reporting month and this one will be nothing but the last date in this case you can use max as well it will work the same and then i will write date here and i will not choose the dt calendar date because it will show me the end of 2025 instead i will choose the, the fact tables uh, date column and when i hit enter i will see that it's the 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 june 2025 indeed and i will quickly make this a short date so now I save this information and next month, as I said, we will have July 2025 and it will also be stored here. Now I go back to the DT calendar and here I will create a new column, um, let's say next to the already existing month name. And here I will call this new month name. And again, um, I will actually benefit from var and return in this case because I will, I will need this information. Uh, starting with actually the year and month so let me actually call uh, first of all let me save um, what what is the the current reporting month here so i will just call this maybe uh, our date which is the reporting uh, reporting date and then this is going to be let's let's use max this time i mean 
we already saved uh, the data so uh, with with only one column and one row so you can use min max it doesn't really matter and then i will just call reporting month and then i will bring the date and if i were to return the the r date what i will see is i will see only 0106 2025 now what we will do is we will also extract the month and year information from from this R date in order to use it for the year and month. And the reason I'm doing that is that because I have all the days available in this date column, so I cannot actually go ahead and say, okay, reporting month date should be equal to DT calendar date. So I need to extract the month and year information. So let me call this uh, again reporting month this time. And what I'm going to do is I will say this is the month. Uh, function and then just bring me the R date so that I will I will bring the six information in this case and similarly I will say R year so the reporting year is is also nothing but the R date and then so we actually save the information so for, let's let's have a look at it this way so the the, the data itself is 0106 2025 then the month is going to be six and the year is going to be 2025. I like to do these kind of illustrations whenever I also need to break it down or, or troubleshoot uh, uh, a DAX calculation itself so that it, it helps me understand okay what is the, the next calculation coming in and then what I will do is I will call this var result and then what I'm going to do is I will use a, a really simple if function here and this if, if function will be that if the year will be equal to our year and the month will be equal to our month then I will call it reporting month else I will just call it as month name so let me do that in this way so I will say year first which is this DT calendar if this is equal to our year and I will use end and go down this time let's say month and select the month column from the DT calendar and then say our month so if the year is equal to our reporting year and month is equal to our reporting month, then let's call this reporting month. If not, then we can simply return the month name from the DT calendar. Now, if I return the result, what I will simply see is I will get the same, um, same name if it's not a reporting month. But let's have a look at uh, let's say 2025 only and as you can see here for the six it's showing up as reporting month and for all the other months it's now showing as May April and so on now what we will simply do is we will come back here and then uh, let me click on this slicer and let me maybe zoom in a little bit so we see it better so uh, the year can stay in this case because we only updated the reporting month so I will get rid of this and add this new month name and then I will update the name as also the month. Here what we are going to see is we will have all the months as well as the, the June itself but as you can see now the sorting is based on alphabetical order so we need to go and fix that as well. So for that what I will simply do is I will select my column here and then I will simply select sort by column and I can sort it by the month because it's already here. If not then we could also create the month column. So I will select the month, come back here. And here I will see again for 2025, January, February, March. And then for the, the June, which is the reporting month, official reporting month coming from the fact table, it will be called a uh, reporting month. So this way we can always choose the reporting month. And as I said, next week, next month, it should be July 2025 and the reporting month should be the same. Now you might also ask, okay, maybe how do the users or how do I know what is the current reporting month in the report? And this is also quite simple where you can simply select, uh, let's say a card or you can create a new, new measure with some text inside. And what you can do is you can simply bring this date here and you can call this reporting month let me do some quick sorting so I will just make them also smaller maybe nine in this case and let me do it this way now this is a, a quick and dirty solution but uh, as I said many things can be done in this case but 
in this first glance i would say um let's keep it like that so uh, as i said this is a quick and dirty solution so you can actually do uh yeah some some different more better looking uh, solutions for this one but what will happen is that let's say that it, uh, a user is is consuming the report in power bi servers and then there was a new update which you also maybe automated the process of which i can also show maybe in the later videos what can happen is that you know it, there will be saying 0107 2025 here and the reporting month will be already selected so you won't have to do anything and you will actually let the user do the changes whenever is needed and this reporting month will be july and then you will have the june data here too and this is all for the dynamic reporting month calculation please let me know if you have some comments and um, i'll see you on the next one